no riz, no riz. Get following the YouTube channel now. He Absolutely. is the man. Hey guys, right. welcome back to another episode of the Riz Podcast. This is episode 27. Today we've got a very, very special guest. It's a good friend of mine. He goes by the name of Mo. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna let him introduce himself to you guys. Yeah, no. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, basically, yeah. My name is Mo. Good friend, uh, you know, Ace. Known for a while. Uh, yeah, to be honest, a bit. I was a bit surprised when you reached out to me to record this. But <laughs> yeah. that's it, bro. Obviously, you know, I'm always trying to support whatever's going on. And if you think there's some value, you know, to be had from speaking to me, then yeah, there you go, bro. Uh, definitely, definitely. So yeah, one of the main reasons I wanted to to bring you on, like this is this is actually. The first episode after a little while, little break, and mm -hmm. you know, I think um, you know, since we started this till now, uh, obviously 2019 is when we start the Riz podcast. Okay, it's now 2020, and obviously I've known you for uh, yeah, a little while. No? 2022. What did I say? 2020. Yeah. Yeah, it's 2022. <laughs> so yeah, three <laughs> years now. Three years now. This has been going on, That's but. But yeah, so obviously in that time, obviously I've known you for a little bit longer than that as well. But in that time, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we've we've been, uh, you know, in contact, having discussions, etc. And uh, yeah, so from my side of things, like I've seen like this, this, this kind of non-linear progression, you know, this, this kind of um, exponential uh, progression right, in right. terms of uh, your, I guess, your ambition and then the gap between your ambition and the reality okay. that you've created. So... Yeah, I think it'd be interesting just to talk about that. Uh, obviously, you know, you run several businesses at the moment. To be fair, yeah, like like you said, like you mentioned, um, I've known you for quite a while. In fact, probably coming up to eight years now, isn't it? Eight years, yeah, yeah. Eight years 2015. And 2014, 2014, 2014, 2014. Yeah, 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 yeah. So eight years. Um, but more recently is when I've kind of got into business and really, um, I wouldn't say more recently is when I got into business. More recently is when I've seen some relative success in any business endeavours that I've been kind of taking part in. And that would probably be over the last, I would say, two years now, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, so for me, obviously, this podcast is, is all about, you know, people who take risks in order to get their risk, right? Risk being mm. sustenance, right? And, uh, yeah, I think you're someone who really does embody that, you know, someone who's a risk taker, someone who's, you know, really kind of lived, uh, you know, on the edge uh, in order to kind of get to where you are now. So, look, before we get into you know anything too much now like wh where did you where were you born where, like where did you grow up where were you born born in london or no it's actually i was born in rwanda central africa yeah yeah so yeah kind of a bit of background about myself um uh originally my parents were from pakistan um they well my granddad moved over to africa during i don't know i think it was a war or something to be honest like i don't really know too much about the dates but yeah my granddad originally moved from pakistan to africa as part of um, the British Army, then my dad was born there, and then I was born there. Mm -hmm. um, but very soon after I was born, we had to leave there because, uh, as you probably know, uh, there was like a genocide in Rwanda around 1993. Mm -hmm. So around 92 is when I think we left. I was probably about three years old. So again, obviously, my memory is not too clear on the dates. But um, yeah, around three years old is when I came to the UK. Um, originally... Lived in Kilburn. Is that technically as a refugee then? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. So, so you've got no refugee. British anything at this point, in you're either Pakistani or Rwandan, basically, at isn't it? At that point, it? yeah, at that point, I just had um, refugee status, just come in. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, I mean, it's probably similar to a lot of people from, like, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, or, like, fleeing, like, you know, conflict, and, um, yeah, come in, got asylum seeker status, uh, moved into, I believe it was a hostel in Kilburn, where I lived with my auntie, so how old yeah. are you at this point um three years old three yeah yeah three okay. years old yeah so i came um separately to my parents i came with my auntie and that's who i stayed with for like the time growing up um but yeah no that, that's it um in northwest london then moved to harrow where we got like a permanent residence and yeah, yeah. pretty much just grew up in harrow in and around northwest london for yeah till now basically up that? until yeah yeah, yeah I, I still reside in the area but um yeah, up until now, but obviously been to a couple of different places since then, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was it like uh, growing up? Did you, did you, like, obviously you grew up in a hostel, you grew up with your aunts, uh, you grew up in North West London, like, what was it, what was it like when you were kind of growing up? Yeah, so growing up, um, I think I kind of touched on some of this stuff with you, like, previously when I was just having a chat with you, but yeah, growing up, my family were, um, 
uh, like I mentioned, I grew up with my auntie and my grandma, uh, neither of who were working. So pretty much just relying on like, you know, benefits and things like that. But um, yeah, it was obviously the associate lifestyle with that. So like, you know, like public housing, you know, council flats and council houses and things. Um, yeah, I went to like a pretty normal school, uh, high school. I went to college, but didn't really progress further into university. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that's it really just growing up with like, I mean, little means, but we, we made you because... Like, obviously, when you're in those situations, you, you kind of have to, have to budget. Mm. And I mean, we had, had enough growing up. Like, it wasn't like, like, really, really struggled. But obviously, within those means, though, do you know what I mean? Mm. Did you have, like, because uh, I know you to be quite an ambitious person. So, d- like, back in them days, did you have ambition or what, what, I guess, what were you on? What were you on, like, kind of, you know, at that time? We were talking about how, you know, when, you know, we were growing up in, in the societies at the time that we were growing up in, you know, there was a lot less of this technology. So we were out, we were out a lot more. Uh, so kind of what, what were you on at that time when you were, when you were growing up? So that's the thing though, like um, growing up within those kind of limited circumstances of um, within like a family that doesn't really have that stable income or no income really except, uh, you know, what the state provides. Um, I think my kind of experiences were quite limited. So we weren't taking like annual holidays or mm. we didn't have a car like growing up we didn't have a car at all so just straight public transport mm. everywhere like trains buses um yeah loads of memories of like waiting at bus stops when i was a kid or waiting at like train stations um yeah I, what i was on <laughs> to be honest nothing really just i didn't really know what to be on if that makes sense um all i knew was just okay go to school okay after school stay at home mm. i don't really have like you know like a huge friend circle like money where I can just say to my auntie like you know mm. take me here and let's go here and there um, I was fortunate enough that like growing up she did take me to a few places like museums and things like that mm. and I think that's some, something that's really stuck with me like throughout my life like just the kind of I, I like going Culture, to music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. that kind of because ex- they're free, really, isn't it? Like, you mm. know, I think those times you had to pay for a museum, but it was like you know a minor little fee. Mm. But um, yeah, that's it. We didn't really have. I wasn't really exposed to too much in terms of like traveling or like even business. So I didn't really know anyone that mm. was making money or not even money, just just living life. We just had like a really like quite restricted life mm. and just limited means, really, in it. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose you're you're kind of you're able to say that now, looking back onto it. But at the time, it was just what it was, wasn't it? It wasn't absolutely, absolutely, wasn't yeah. anything more than that. No. Yeah, 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 abs- absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I do like really like quite vividly remember like seeing um, people like I'd go to like obviously you you make friends in school, you go to their house, mm. and it's probably something a lot of people can relate to, especially that you know who have come from circumstances where they don't really have that many means. But going to like a friend's house and they got like a birthday party and mm. like the parents have put money into it. Like everyone's giving them gifts and got mm. loads of family coming around and like, you know, they've got two cars in the driveway mm-hmm. and they're talking about like going on holiday next month. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, okay. Wow. They're like people really <laughs> do these kind of things. But yeah, those kind of things were alien to me. Like, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah even, even like buying things like, you know, couldn't just be going out and buying new clothes or even like, I never really understood why we couldn't get a car. That's probably like the biggest thing. <laughs> I, I didn't understand. Like, what is it like how come we just can't get this car in it and yeah, like, yeah. we just never got a car so even that like just okay cool fine like, public transport is and then so so kind of you you mentioned about um you know you didn't go to university was there any any reason behind that in terms of like you going down like some sort of career route some path or was it more to do like, what was the circumstances behind that so kind of um like building on that limited mindset that I had I didn't really have anyone older than me in my family like family members or uh yeah i don't really have anyone that i could kind of look at and say oh like my uncle's a doctor my dad's an electrician or you know my auntie does something else so maybe i want to go into like this certain vocation or certain career Mm. or academia or anything like that i didn't really know anyone like that so like throughout all of my schooling i was pretty much just okay come to school do the work whatever it is i don't know where this leads do you know what i mean like what's the point of this school thing how am I going to make money in the future? I didn't mm. see anyone else doing anything. So I was like, okay, probably just, you know, benefits and just mm. stick to whatever I've just seen growing up. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like uh, there's just like a, a, a real lack of like leadership, not, not leadership, like mentorship or like no real kind of role model to kind of that, even like for you to just see 
and just say oh that would be something that i would like to be on and it? it's just kind of exactly exactly yeah there's, there's the no motions. guidance yeah, yeah yeah but bear in mind all of this is like growing up as a kid uh so you mentioned you like university level so even going through high school i still hadn't like really figured out what i was gonna do i literally had no idea um i did know that i liked kind of I don't know, it sounds crazy, but I liked like cars and like fixing cars and things like that. Yeah, yeah. In fact, like it sounds so stupid thinking about it now, right? But I really liked fixing cars. And yeah, yeah. I really, I don't know, I just had this fixation. Like, okay, you know, I'm going to get a car. Well, that, that was a big achievement for me. Like, yeah, yeah one day yeah. I'm going to get a car. And then somehow that translated to when I was picking what courses to do in college, I picked mechanical engineering. Mm. Although obviously mechanical engineering is like a lot of like mathematics and mm. the engineering of, I guess, machines and things like that. I don't know why I thought it was mechanics <laughs> so that kind of like yeah it gives you an insight into like the kind of mindset I had like I didn't know I just didn't know right, okay, like, okay. No, I know I didn't speak to anyone about it and say oh like how do I become a mechanic yeah, yeah. instead I looked at the paper I was yeah, like oh yeah, mechanical yeah. engineering yeah, that sounds about right yeah, yeah. sign up for the course it's like a three-year course I just go there every day I don't really know what's going on yeah, yeah. and then obviously that lifestyle that wasn't really congruent with me then kind of moving forward and achieving any kind of real mm. success and moving on to university and yeah that's where it really just stopped for me with like school and stuff so what did you do after that then would you just start working yeah so that's probably where i can say my life began um wow in terms of like careers and kind of getting out on my own like the real world type of yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. that's where i like really had my first exposure of things um at the age of 18 so probably when i should have been going to uni um that's when i applied for like a job as a security guard Okay. I mean, I say I applied, but I didn't even know how to like apply or get a job. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had no experience in any of these things. Um, <laughs> so it's like someone that I knew ha- said to me, "Oh, why don't you come get your, you know, SIA license?" Yeah, yeah. So I managed to get that at the time, and yeah, just eighteen years old, just started working a security job, yeah, yeah. just like full time. Cool. So now, eighteen years old, you've gone into working as a security guard now. Uh, and even that is like it's not even like a proper application it's just like someone that you've known and yeah. you've kind of spoken to someone and you've gone into it and so you said that that's kind of where your life began then like so you started to understand the real world and do you know what's crazy yeah like thinking about it now <coughs> excuse me yeah thinking about it now when i started security that's like the first real income that i had because mm. obviously prior to that I was, I was a kid really isn't it although i did um like do like paper rounds and odd jobs around, you know, like I used to do a paper round and work at the news agents and just try and get extra money like, mm. after school and stuff. But that's not obviously, that's like, we're talking like tens of pounds or like mm. maybe like a hundred pounds at the end Did of the day. Did you ever do the thing? Obviously there's a very stereotypical thing for like entrepreneurs where there's like selling uh, like a candy in oh, the like playground. Oh, like Yeah, lemonade stands, yeah. stand, stuff do like that. you know that. what? Yeah, probably like just trying to, I don't know, because I used to skateboard, so I used to try and like fix people's skateboards or just, yeah, do little things, like little odd things just to kind of, I don't know, get some money and just see, you know, what I can do. But um, nothing too serious. But when I started security, that's when, obviously, I was working full time. So, Mm. like, I think that's probably when I saw, like, my first, you know, thousand pounds. And I was like, oh, wow, Mm. like, I'm getting paid this much money. And the thing that really sticks out to me is I remember being able to go and buy, like, McDonald's and, like, go to the chicken shop and buy food where before I'd be like, okay, cool, I just got to eat at home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't really have that money. Like, I might have, like, £10 or something for the day. Yeah, yeah. But I can't really be spending that on food or I just eat at home. I might eat before I go out. So that was, like, yeah, a huge upgrade for me. Like, I had disposable income, basically. Right, okay, okay. So going from, like, no income. You're still living with your your aunts at the moment. Well, that's the thing. Like, when I got that job, that's when I moved out as well. At 18? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably, like, 17 years old. I remember, like, moving out um yeah th- those kind of two things like me suddenly being out you know my own place and like my own income now yeah, yeah. it kind of really opened my eyes to okay this is how things work like i remember um 18 years old being in the flat that i moved into and like i wanted toast in the morning but we didn't have a toaster <laughs> I, I, didn't, I just didn't know to buy a toaster so yeah just that's it like that's basically when things really picked up well not picked up for me but really changed for me in my life um I managed to stay in that job for, I say managed, I, I probably stuck to it for about probably seven years. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, it's yeah. It's quite a yeah. long time then, isn't it? Yeah, so like my early adulthood, basically, that just like, yeah, doing yeah. security. Up to about 24, then you're working in security. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Um, so, yeah, did that for a while. That's like, it was, yeah, it was definitely a good experience because 
like I said to you, I learned about the world, mm. had money. That's when I could really then start like going out, buying my own clothes, mm. doing my own things. I even managed to like get a car at that time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that really kind of like taught me a lot because um, with security, like you end up spending a lot of time by yourself. So a lot of the times I was by myself, I tried to I tried to read, right? So this is like you're probably gonna hear me talk about this quite a lot, but um, actually I think a lot of people talk about reading as like. It's very much like a cliche when you ask someone like, okay, what'd you do? Or mm. how did you kind of reach these conclusions? Or like, you know, mm. what's the kind of like, not key to your success, but what attributes would you, you know, kind of say? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. And people always say reading. And do you know what? Obviously, I'm, I'm going to say it here. But yeah, that is really one of the things that really, really helped me in my life. Because I remember even from that age, um, I mean, like 18, 19 years old, um, there was this like kind of security hut that you have to sit in. So you probably see security guards sometimes mm. sitting like loading bays yeah, in like yeah, huts. Yeah, yeah. And I, a lot of the time I used to have to do that shift where I'd be sitting there for like four or five hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to fall asleep. So I'll pick up the paper, I'll read like the paper, like cover to cover. Mm. I'll read all the news, read like, I wasn't really into sports, but like, I tried to read some of the sports stuff. Mm -hmm. And I tried to understand like, the, like, you know, like the Metro, you get the free paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I remember like, at one point I picked up like the Times on i think like the times on sunday is quite thick right mm. it has like all these like magazines and supplements in it and i thought to myself like why is the newspaper thick like a book like what's going on here like who who sits and reads this yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like who has time to do this so i used to then read that and like that kind of got me thinking a lot about like politics economics just kind of exposing my mind to like the wider world out there while still working in security basically mm. yeah no i know i know um i know how much uh you've read over the years and and it's interesting as well actually like looking at your journey because like we we've been on some some like mad trips together like across europe and stuff like that and mm. you know we, we we've driven and listened to like the godfather audiobook and stuff like that yeah and yeah, yeah. uh and yeah it's interesting because at those times at those times you know i remember it was like it was it was whatever whatever was happening at the time there was no there was no future for that in it it was just it was just doing it to to keep going, wasn't it? Like uh, I'm talking about the the actual work that was happening at the time that we we were actually going to Europe for, and it mm. that wasn't something that was like a future career that you're gonna spend the rest of your life doing this thing and build. It was just something that we were doing, but you were still reading. You were still that was still part of your life at that time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely, it's a habit that stuck from with me from the days where I used to sit in like a security booth reading the newspaper cover mm. to cover. I didn't really have books, and to be honest, like I remember even trying to talk to people like around me, be like, oh, I read like a five page article on why the oil price has dropped. Mm. Like, do you know anything about this? And people are like, no, nah, we, what are we, you know, <laughs> yeah, what are we talking yeah. about? Like, why, why are you reading this? Just, you know, watch some TV or I don't know, just try, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not something that people really supported or kind of could relate to. But for me, I, I really find it interesting. I really like, you know, reading all these articles about, you know, things happening across the world, mm. things happening in the economy. Mm. And yeah, it's really exposing my mind to greater things. From those times through to then, as you mentioned, um, later in my life, I picked up a job where I had to do a lot of driving. Mm -hmm. So as you know, like driving all over Europe, uh, even then obviously like flying across the world. But I switched from reading actual like books and newspapers to then podcasts, mm -hmm. podcasts and also audio books. Mm -hmm. So times I'd be like driving for like eight hours, I'd just put on a book and mm. like over three or four days, I'd just end up finishing like one or two books. Yeah, yeah. No, that's wicked. And so, so you're you're doing the security guard uh, job until you're 24, then, and then you move on to this driving job, right? So, so obviously, the the, the kind of where we're obviously leading up to is is the point now where you have these multiple businesses that you're running, and mm. you know you you you've got this, you know, uh, this you know you've got this this plan, you've got these processes that you've put in place, and you know, so so what what what's interesting is just to, to hear this kind of progression between I guess even the mindset of what you're doing at that time and then what what I guess was the point at which things turned and things changed right so you're doing the security guard job then you're moving on to the driving job what what year is this now so probably looking at around 2015 Basically, okay. what happened, what the catalyst was to really kind of get me away from security and into something else. Uh, we say driving job, but realistically what it was is um, 
I was a technician a tech company, for our yeah, company, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm not going to mention the company or the clients, but they were pretty affluent clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of these venues they were booking like five star hotels, villas mm. across places like Sardinia to Zurich, Switzerland. Yeah, we but, went to Milan. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, we you remember to, yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah nah. So what happened? The catalyst really there was um, I ended up losing my job, mm-hmm. and I was actually unemployed for like a year. So yeah, at that yeah. point, I was... That's, that's when we met, that kind of period exactly, of time, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. 2014. That's around about the time that we met. That's when um, you were unemployed. Mm-hmm. You, you became unemployed from that security guard job then. That's it, yeah. Right, yeah okay, okay, it. okay. Right, what happened there? How come you lost that job? <laughs> to be honest, I don't know, man. I think um, working there so long, I just became frustrated and just picking up bad habits. And to be honest, I think around that time, my life was pretty hectic. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it just really wasn't working out. Like, I wasn't giving them the best performance. And mm. to be honest, at that point, I think it was becoming quite apparent that this wasn't what I wanted to do. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that you'll probably understand as well is when you really don't want to do something, it kind of holds you back from giving you 100%, like 100% of that job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just, it, now it's clear that why things really fell apart. But at the time, I was quite frustrated. Mm. And then obviously, losing your job is not going to help that and mm. yeah just unemployed for about so what was it was it something that you wanted like did you want to have like a bigger and better life or what, what was it that that's sec- being a security guard which is all you've pretty much known since be- becoming an adult mm. you know why why isn't it because th- the reason i ask this is because there are so many people that do get into a job when they just come out of university or when they leave school mm. and that kind of becomes them Right, no matter what it is, that, that kind of just becomes them. So why didn't that, why wasn't it the case for you where, you know, that wasn't I was enough? Content, yeah. yeah, why weren't you content you with that? What? I'll be honest with you. Um, I think what it was is around that age, um, I've seen a lot of people that were the same age as me, mm-hmm. you know, around obviously 20 to 24, 25 years old that had maybe had like a different path in life, maybe different upbringing or mm. different circumstances. And were able to kind of do a lot more than I was able to do. So even at that age, even obviously on a security guard salary, bearing in mind like, um, you know, I'm living independently, you know, I'm having to cover like, you know, bills and things like that as well. Um, I wasn't, like, I couldn't go every day and buy new trainers. Mm. I couldn't book a holiday to like Ibiza, do you know what I mean? Because mm. I couldn't like take the time off work and then I wouldn't have the money to go. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, things yeah. are quite still like quite strict for me. Most people at that age are still living at home with their parents and they're working a job and, and if they've come out of university they're probably earning 35, 40 grand living at home with their parents. So they've got mm. crazy amounts of disposable income because they're not paying any rent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that so so you're probably looking at these people and thinking like, wow, like flipping hell, like yeah, they got yeah. and it's not even a case of um I think, you know, ha- not having it. It's just I think from you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like it was just the case of the fact that you had gone through kind of a level of hardship that these people wouldn't actually possibly ever even need to know in it. And so it's that comparison almost, isn't it, of like, why why them, why me, what, what, what's this situation, what's this exactly, scenario? Exactly, yeah. Um, it wasn't that as apparent when you're going through it. Mm, so I was just thinking, yeah, like, yeah why, why can't I, you know, go and spend a thousand pounds on a holiday? Like, why do I have to keep the same car that I've got? Why can't I just go buy a new car? Mm. Why can't I maybe go out shopping and spend like £600 on clothes? Mm. Um, what's really holding me back? Oh, yeah, cool. I've got to go work in the morning. You know, oh, yeah, I've got rent due in a week. Mm. Maybe I've got something's happened with my car, my phone. I've got, you know, extra expenses. And, yeah, it wasn't apparent to me then, but I was just going through it. I was thinking, like, why, like, why me? Isn't it? Mm. You know what I mean? And, yeah, that, like, frustration just kind of built up in me. Um, ended up losing a job, not having a job, and yeah, that was that was pretty difficult to be honest. I remember even a time when, after that, I was even applying for like a cleaning job, mm. and I couldn't even get that because again, like I hadn't really built any skills. Um, what happened was because I was working security for so long, mm. obviously I didn't like go to uni. I didn't really expand on any skills from mm. education, which I didn't really that didn't really set me up for any skills anyway. All I had was just know how to you know like do security and that's it mm. so again i assumed like i'll just do that and i remember even um i had like a really difficult decision to make i was like look i need another job i mm. need something maybe a little bit better that'll support me so i even remember like thinking okay what's the best thing i can really hope to do like what's like the ultimate i can hope to achieve mm. and i remember seeing like a job posting to become a fireman okay and i was paying like 30k or something i was like yeah this is great 
like it's physical work mm. and at that time um you probably know but like i was working out a lot i was doing like mma yeah yeah, yeah. um to be honest with you like even with the mma stuff like uh i really like that kind of really took me away from work and took me away from stuff that was going around my home yeah, and, yeah. Quite literally, you were up in the mountains in Bulgaria, weren't you, at some point? Yeah, 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 yeah. So my coach, like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, like the whole MMA thing is a whole different thing. So, like, I ended up joining, like, a gym in North East London. Yeah. I met, like, an MMA coach there. Um, it was actually Kyokushin Karate that I was doing specifically. But then I would also do, like, some BJJ sometimes, some Muay Thai, some boxing. But really, it was, like, my Kyokushin coach who, like, this guy would always talk about, like, yeah, giving you 100% and it's like real like philosophy of training and like this mentality and I never really used to understand it I was like oh, why is this guy like trying to go so hard <laughs> like mm. all the time do you know what I mean but um I don't know like I, I never understood it but it really kind of resonated with me and but even that again like I would have loved to train seven days a week mm. you know and then t- twice a day stuck to a diet and maybe gone on like more like training camps and like competitions and stuff but I just couldn't do you know what I mean I, mm. I got to work so I'm restricted with the number of days I can train. Mm. Obviously, I do like a 12-hour shift. I'm tired. I've got to train at the end. Mm. Or, yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah. Um, you look for something more physical, you're saying? Yeah. Because so, that was the last sorry, thing yeah, you ever yeah. did. I was, I was looking for something more physical. I thought, okay, fireman's perfect. Look, it's a stable job. Mm. I'll do like four on, four off, all these shifts. I was mm. like, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> and genuinely, I remember when applying for that, it was... Literally, I thought, yeah, this is the best thing. When I get this, I was, I was really excited for it. Mm. I did the application, really prepared and everything. And I didn't end up getting the job. And that really kind of hit me. Like, I was like, oh, wow. Like, if I can't get this, what am I going to do? Yeah, yeah. Like, this is 2014, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around 2014. Yeah. So I'm like trying to apply for these cleaning jobs. Nothing's really coming through. Um, yeah, I just ended up doing loads of odd jobs. I really struggled for money. Um, bearing in mind obviously like you know paying rent and all these kind of things at the same time mm. it doesn't really help so it was at one point where again like I met up with someone that I know and I asked him what he was doing and he said oh I'm driving and delivering equipment for this tech company like mm. yeah just give them a shout so again like mm. guy gave me the number I called up the company I was like hey look I'm looking for a job um, they said yeah cool whatever you know come through as a part time like assistant or like assistant technician or whatever you can do these kind of events and mm like so i was like, all right cool so yeah that's it really started freelancing for this tech company doing mm. that and again like it was another transitional stage where i was like oh wow so like all of a sudden they're booking me to like do this technology in events running like you know the savoy five-star hotels in london mm. um in fact i remember like my first like first or second month on the job they actually offered to um, for me to do a job in paris I was like, oh, wow, like, like, I was so naive. I was like, oh, so, like, I don't know. I don't know if I've got, if I can afford to travel to Paris. Like, <laughs> I didn't really understand. They're like, no, no, of course. Like, we'll pay for your hotel. Right, okay, we'll pay for okay. your transport there. Yeah, we'll yeah, pay yeah. you decent love. So I looked at it. I was like, oh, wow, this is, like, a couple hundred pounds for the day. Mm. Like, that's that's not too bad. So I jumped on that. And then, even that was so interesting, like, actually having to go work abroad. Yeah, that was yeah. probably my first experience working abroad. So yeah, that, that's. Did you travel much before? Like, because obviously, do you know what? I'll be honest with you. I probably hadn't travelled until the age of like. I hadn't left the UK until I was probably nineteen or twenty years old. Where'd you go? I went to Dubai. I went to Dubai. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went to Dubai for a holiday. Yeah, that was a quick little holiday there. But um, yeah, even that wasn't really that great. But. Yeah, literally, like, tw- like first 20 years, I obviously, apart from coming to the UK, yeah, I hadn't yeah. really been on a plane, had, like, no experience or, like, what to do. <laughs> Even, like, going to, like, other cities, um, Ber- like, I wasn't going to, like, Manchester or Birmingham. Mm. So, even probably the first time I went to, like, Birmingham, Manchester was probably, yeah, I wasn't, like, 21, 22 years old. Going there, I was like, wow, like, there's other places <laughs> in the UK, meeting people from different areas there, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And then, so, okay, so you now getting this opportunity to go to Paris and obviously you're quite naive at this point in terms of how these businesses work and how these jobs work mm. where, you know, they'll pay for you to go there because that's, you know, what the mm. job is. But, you know, you, you kind of, that that's what I mean. Like, you're so kind of, uh, yeah, uh, lack of experience in that field. And so now now you're being exposed to, uh, you know, a more corporate organization, a tech, a tech company, and now you're working with, 
obviously, yeah, uh, again, not to name anything, but, you know, household name institutions, etc., uh, that are kind of at these events that you're working at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and now you're traveling the world now. Stuff as well, as you know, some football teams as well. I, you know, I'm going to just say this, isn't it? Like, <laughs> my man called me one day and said, listen, I'm going to Liverpool. And uh, and uh, yeah, it was the uh, it was the Liverpool it was the Liverpool FC um, the players dinner. players awards yeah players dinner the players awards yeah. and so he calls me he says wear a black t shirt <laughs> wear and a black t shirt I was like oh listen I'm going here like do you know anything about it? yeah yeah and obviously like no one knew you a big fan of Liverpool so I just went I just went yeah behind the scenes Remember behind the scenes met, like, yeah yeah I got and, pictures with with a lot of the guys yeah and that was good. and that, that was, normal, was funny like, but for yeah. me it was so that's the thing like going to these things that's where yeah, I kind of yeah. really like again going. Like it's another transitional stage. I was like yeah, going from yeah. security, just local in the area, to then now nationwide, experiencing different mm. things and just see more like what what's yeah, happening. Yeah, and you know that was amazing as well because uh, again, I yeah that was one 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 event that I came to you with, and the other one was in Milan, where we drove down and we we were able to drive down the uh, Mont Blanc tunnel. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. The longest tunnel in the world. Yeah, is that well, right? I think at least in Europe. Yeah, at least in Europe. Yeah, amazing. I mean, the roads were crazy. Mm. I mean, where you're literally just like looking over, and it's just a sheer drop down into the mountain valley. So, mm. yeah, no, these 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 things definitely kind of do change your mind. So you've gone obviously from you know from Rwanda. Now you moved to to Northwest London, growing up in a hostel. Uh, you know, you grew up with your aunts in council houses and public housing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, you've uh, then left school and started working in a security company. You, you're there for a few years and now you feel that, okay, this isn't enough for me. And so you leave it, not really with much of a backup plan or anything like that either. I mean, did you have any kind of plan before leaving or was it just a case of like, I just need to go and you know, find something? And then obviously that, that came along the, the, the tech company. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I mentioned to you, it wasn't even my choice. To be, to be honest with you, okay. if I hadn't like lost that job in security, I probably... I don't still, know. Oh, knows? you still could be there then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who okay, knows? okay, fine, fine, fine. You get it? That's what I mean. Ah, right? fine, so, okay. So you could have just gone down that route, but actually, yeah, but I could probably still be there right now. Like, yeah, who knows? It wasn't meant for you though, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had yeah, to boot yeah, you yeah, out. Exactly. And then even with the tech company, I started off as like a junior role, and then just worked more and more mm. until within like six months of freelancing, they offered me like a permanent position, and that's when like things got really interesting because I had to work. Even then, like I'm talking about like not traveling and stuff. Like I'm really kind of like trying to highlight my ignorance at the time, right? Yeah. Like, I hadn't even worked with computers because I didn't have a computer growing up. <laughs> right. Like, that's the thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't had a computer growing up. The only computers I'd use yeah, yeah. were in, like, school. Like, I didn't even have a laptop. Do you know what I mean? Right, yeah, So yeah. now I'm having to, like, I don't know, set up, like, 60 brand new laptops. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, Set up all these, like, you know, all this equipment. Wireless and, equipment yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. So Networking like, wow, like, stuff, yeah. I remember going on YouTube. I remember, like, I was really, really kind of, like, I don't know, aware of this aware of my ignorance like in the role but i didn't want to show it yeah, yeah so yeah, I, was, yeah. I was like yeah of course yeah i'll do this i'll do that and then i remember like they'd give me a task like, oh can you set up this mm. router with like this ip address I'm like, oh, well, okay but yeah cool <laughs> and then i'd ask like one of the guys like i don't know one of the junior guys or one of the other guys yeah. in a different department like oh hey listen um i was wondering if you could show me how you do this yeah, and yeah, yeah. they'd show me and then i'd go back and do the job and <laughs> like that really taught me a lot about like technology and computers as well because yeah. like bear in mind like still later on in life isn't it yeah, like, yeah, I think like mentioning what you mentioned previously about uh, like we're obviously from a different like generation. Yeah, kids yeah. Kids these days probably grow up with like laptops and 100%. Not, not even probably like it's definitely isn't definitely, it? iPad yeah, phones. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So for me to really start using a computer when I was like in my I don't know early to mid twenties was seems crazy now, but yeah, it's not that long ago. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Like I mean, even for me, it's uh, you know I was the youngest of three, so. Uh, you know, for me, I was kind of fortunate in that sense that, you know, I had an older brother who wanted, you know, he was old enough to want a PC and, you know, okay. obviously they got it. So then by virtue of that, I was able to work with PCs and stuff from quite a young age as well. So, yeah, I th again, you know, it's, it's a circumstance, isn't it? It's, mm. it's like whatever your kind of the environment that you're growing up in. And if you didn't have that, you know, you grew up with your aunt and, you know, again, you know, what, why would she want a PC? Why would she want a laptop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And absolutely, uh, absolutely. You know, if uh, if you're kind of um, if if going to a KFC or a McDonald's is is quite uh, you know a big thing because now you're eating out, you're eating like branded food and stuff like that. Mm. You know how are you gonna how are you gonna get these other things? You know what I mean? Absolutely. So um, absolutely, yeah. so yeah, no, that's really interesting. And and again, yeah, like uh, I I know what you're trying to kind of elicit is that you know the the ignorance of of where you were in 
even up until you know as close as you know six seven years ago um and again it's these little turning points in your life is um you know going from school into work and now you're having this opportunity to see the real world and have disposable income and then you've been kicked out of that work now and you're kind of left to your own devices to try and get a new role now you're in this new role and you're developing in that you're seeing the world mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so uh yeah okay so so obviously we started uh we we met kind of 2014 2015 and uh you know from you know i've always kind of been interested in business i've always looked into business i was running uh, a recruitment company at the time where when we actually met as well and so so where was it from your side of things that things really started to change from working in that company to then actually stepping out it's and business. then stepping out into to business now because obviously i remember that you were very happy with that role because of all the things that you mentioned all the the learning that you were going through and obviously that's something that's very important to you which i'm sure you'll mention as well but you know that was a, that was a point where there was a lot of learning happening for you etc so where was it that then you decided that okay well actually this is no longer enough for me either so, you know what? that's actually interesting it wasn't like think about it now it wasn't like a light bulb moment where i was like, okay now nah, this is it i've got to because i think a lot of people like when you ask them mm. about what really changed for them or what really kind of drives like their ambition and their success they, they think about like a moment mm. a key moment and for me it was like just a series of years that kind of gradually led me to that point so like you mentioned i was in, in that tech company and then i worked there kind of built my way up and even that one at one point it wasn't really enough for me i was like look i've gained these skills now Mm. um let me see who else i can kind of market my skills to Mm. like what other kind of companies are there well i didn't even know this company existed so maybe there's other companies that do similar technology and similar solutions Mm -hmm. um yeah like then i found another company i left that job and it turned out to be an upgrade so rather than driving everywhere i was flying everywhere Mm. so i ended up flying to um without kind of touching on too much but a lot of the clients that that, com- that tech company had were like private banks, big financial institutions, like top accountants and mm-hmm. uh, big pharma companies and you know, things like that. So suddenly I've gone from driving around to flying like to, you know, different parts of the world, mm. different continents like New York, you know, South Africa, Australia, mm. um, yeah, like Hong Kong. And I'm, you know, in these big meetings with these people and just kind of constantly thinking back and like saying to myself okay wow look like there is more opportunity out there like if even if it's not in northwest london even mm. if it's not in london even if it's not nationwide in the uk it might be overseas it might be mm. somewhere else like there are different ways of living like look at all these people and it was quite um yeah it's quite a strange time because i was traveling a lot like up to three four times a month so like mm. three or four weeks out of the month um so like up to three weeks out of the month i wouldn't be in at home or in London so I'd always be travelling city to city I'd come mm. back pack another suitcase leave the next day I'd be gone for like a week come back two three days and I'm always meeting new clients having to like reintroduce myself so it's like really quite I don't know disassociating if that makes sense mm. like you know if you're working locally like you know who your colleagues are they know who right. you are yeah, yeah. it's like you've got new colleagues like twice time a week in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like literally people that you don't know and then you'll never meet them again Yeah, yeah. so yeah just throughout that whole period um in terms of business it really showed me that like you're always limited to like your skill set you know what i mean mm. like it's either skill set or opportunity so I, was, I saw that well you know i'm getting i'm behind this desk right here mm. and i'm doing this work here on this laptop running this event but literally on the other side of the desk there's a guy over there he's come to this conference and he's probably getting paid 10 years of my salary do you know what I mean? Mm. Like his bonus that he's probably making off this is like what I'd earn in five years. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, what is it that he's doing over there, and what right. is it that I'm doing over here? Because you've got the same time, you're in the same room. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, that. Yeah. And then I'm trying to pay attention. Like, what is it? Like, what is he doing? What is he saying? Mm. What are they saying to him? And then that's where I kind of learned about business. And um, this kind of coupled with like my like my passion of reading and learning. Um, it just made me kind of, you know, learn about the economy. I'd read, like, economics books, mm. like, mathematics. Just always reading the paper, listening to podcasts about, like, you know, politics and mm. whatever's just happening in the world and just kind of trying to build that sense of myself and my position in the world and where I can then manoeuvre to and what I can manoeuvre to, what is possible for me. Mm. And 
all of that then culminated in probably just before coronavirus mm. where I was like, nah, like now again, I have to take the step again. Mm. Again, it's like another transitional period where going from job to job, but now that that's it. I think this might be like the last job I'm ever going to work. Right. Okay, and now okay. I need to kind of just really, you know, do something else. Mm. So the, the whole concept of a job just wasn't enough. It wasn't what you were doing. It was just the actual being, being uh, I guess, a cog in a wheel rather than being the entire machine itself. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I always thought that, like, do you know what? If I can master this and I can always, like, whenever I've kind of worked my way up through a role or through mm-hmm. anything I've done, I've always thought, okay, how can I do this? But then how can I take it a step further? How can I add, like, my own kind of take mm-hmm. onto this? And then, as you probably know, like, the corporate world doesn't really always foster that mentality mm. no <laughs> like, definitely to, to put it lightly you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, like exactly. sometimes you, you got to just kind of like do what they tell you the whole the whole purpose is uh is to toe the line exactly exactly the that, whole that's purpose actually is the word to toe, I was looking toe for. the line that's it yeah that's it yeah and sometimes like that's not enough like for maybe what i wanted and mm. that's what i thought it's not for me it wasn't more so okay yeah if i go and do business maybe one day i can buy a lambo mm. buy a mansion or something like that it's more if i go and do business i can do what i want to do mm. and maybe monetize that or maybe have my input in the economy and just see where i can kind of fit in rather than yeah if i go and do bit, it's just it's not it wasn't always just chasing money for me mm. it was kind of chasing that creative freedom and just the freedom to kind of learn more and explore more, more and then implement ideas that i've learned along the way Mm, no, I get that. So, I mean, obviously, the big question is, uh, you know, what 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 business, you know, what business did uh, were you able to 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 start? That's the question that most people watching who don't run a business right now, and and you know, most of the people who are watching this might have that ambition where they do want to start a business. Um, for me, obviously, you know, a, a lot of the time you you look at what skills do you have. And then you kind of, if, okay, if you're working in a company, you have that skill, then you can kind of take that skill outside. And, you know, that, that I guess, was not the, the case with yourself then, was it? So how was it that, you know, what, what was it that you were able to then, uh, you know, get into and start doing? Uh, and, you know, how were you able to transition from what you were doing there into what you're doing now or what you started at that point? Okay, so that's actually interesting because um, it wasn't actually my first venture into business. I'd always kind of had, like, the idea of doing stuff on my own. In fact, I remember um, through the whole experience I gained through working in the like IT and tech industry, I really wanted to kind of teach people how to use computers. I, I thought about it. Yeah, I, okay. Like you, I you probably remember, you right? Yeah, yeah, I thought about it and I was like, well, do you know what? This is definitely a skill that people can benefit mm. from. A lot of people these days, especially with things, you know, moving online, like maybe I can go out and like, like obviously we mentioned, like I grew up with my auntie and my grandma, obviously quite elderly, not really exposed yeah, to technology yeah, yeah. and things like that. So I thought, yeah, maybe this is something I can do. Like, I can definitely see a need for it. Mm. Like, even now, if someone's probably watching, there's definitely a need for it, isn't it? Out yeah. in the market. So I thought, all right, cool. I'll go on Vista Print. I'll print up leaflets. I'll start trying to market to people. And I didn't even get one person. Like, I was trying to offer a decent... I went to, like, coffee shops and yeah, stuff yeah. up leaflets and really thought about the designs and how am I going to design this leaflet and put my phone number here and what am I going to say to people when they call mm. and what am I going to charge them and how do I market it? How do I price it? Mm. When I go, what kind of service do I offer? Um, I really, really like thinking deep into it. Like even to the point where I was like, do you know what? I'll take them into like Starbucks because maybe perhaps like not only do people want to learn technology, but maybe they want to get out of the house. They mm. want to have a like friend a, almost. Re- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Almost like have a friend. Yeah, or yeah. Cause again, I'm, I'm trying to market to people that maybe like of older, older age and, just to kind of get them out and maybe this can be something for them just to kind of get them out and mm. get them into like a communal environment. Do you know what mm, I mean? Yeah. Out yeah. in the coffee shop, they're learning something. Do you know what I mean? Being productive. So I really thought into that and then looked into like, okay, why start, like where, where would I do this? Starbucks or a library? Or, mm. But yeah, like I said, like put all this thought into it, all this effort into it, put like a hundred pounds into it to print leaflets on this print. It really hurt me at the time because I really have yeah. that much money and yeah, I went nowhere and didn't even get one person. Yeah. So yeah, that like like I said, it, it wasn't my first kind of venture into business. Mm. I've done that, done a few other little things as well. But it just so happened that at the time I started my business, there was a huge demand within that industry, mm. 
and it was something I was able to see and forecast but again I know it sounds like cliche like we probably hear like people talking about all the time and I was always frustrated as well when I was starting all these little businesses and all these little things and nothing was really working out for me and mm. you know you always hear people say oh yeah you got to try and fail and mm. you know, one day you'll succeed I was like man but why like I just want to succeed now like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. why can't I just think about something do something and then that yeah, happens, results in money isn't it yeah, yeah. so with that I can't really attribute that to anything that I did like when the time came for me and it just so happened that you know what I went stepped into worked mm. I can't really attribute that opportunity being there to like myself and saying that I did anything to bring that about it just happened to come about but what I will say is that opportunities coming about are only part of the actual the entire journey isn't it mm. like I could have you know got the opportunity stepped into it and not really again like did my part or kind of fell off and they, they they say luck is when opportunity yeah it's when opportunity meets preparation exactly exactly so it's almost like you you were looking for something though weren't you exactly you weren't you weren't not looking for anything wishing something to come down yeah yeah, yeah. you can you always were like active exactly like with luck and probability you can always kind of skew the odds to do you know what I mean if you prepare mm. if you you know do certain things or are like exposed to certain things and more things maybe you know coming your way but mm. yeah no that, that's it like opportunity did come about and i did happen to kind of then you know put my all into it mm. like i remember um it's funny i was thinking about this the other day even prior to business right like i used to sit on my laptop like i used to be away in countries like i'll be away for like two weeks and i don't know like italy or switzerland or something and i would just be alone like mm. i don't know anyone in the city i don't know where to go Maybe I'll like find like a shisha cafe or something and I'll sit with my laptop mm. and I don't have any work, but I'll just go over the work that I've been doing again and again and just sit there and try to research and just like almost wishing that oh, I had something to do because mm. I was just in that position. I had my laptop there, but mm. compare that to now, obviously, you know, like every time I open my laptop, there's just like multiple things there to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So now talk to me about that transition then of actually running a business. So... Uh, we're talking 2019? Yeah, 2019? yeah, yeah, 20, no, well, 2020, wasn't it, like, coronavirus, beginning, 2020, okay, yeah, um, I did probably, you could probably say I started in early, or late 2019, mm -hmm. and then by, I'd say probably mid 2020, I had my business, like, my first business secured, which is, um, in the logistics industry, and yeah got that rolling kind of put all like i really saw it as like okay this is like you know mm. the chance to actually do something different again yeah, yeah, yeah put my all into it and yeah that's it just spent like literally gave it my everything spent all my time researching staying up all night like you know looking at the data looking mm. at the statistics looking at like how the business is running the finances uh, <coughs> trying to utilize like all you know all the experience I've gained but again like um like I keep kind of referring to like the education and the kind of reading part of it is mm. a big thing so like researching the industry researching the demand researching the market mm. seeing like okay how can this grow how can it expand mm. is that what I want to do do I want to grow do I want this one one business what else can I do like now I've got this what what else is within my grasp yeah because uh, obviously for you to take that 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 step to actually invest your time, your energy, your money into a business in the logistics industry, which isn't a, an industry which you had necessarily experience in, in terms of, especially that. But absolutely, that, that was that was uh, something that you had researched. And again, it goes down to obviously your your hunger for knowledge, and you're looking at opportunities, looking at reading the economic, <clears throat> reading the economic states, and looking at what is actually in demand, what's not in demand, and kind of led you to this conclusion that actually I should be in this industry, I should be doing this. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, no experience, nothing. Put all that work into it. And then within a few months of having started that business, I kind of started thinking like, okay, now I'm not working anyway for anyone. I'm running my own business anyway. So how can I maximize my time? Mm. Like, yeah, cool. I can run this one business and dedicate everything to it. But how can I maximize this potential, this one opportunity I've been given? So is it a case of, I can get something else going while I've got this going as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I improve this to that level? Like, how do I, how do I manage a team of like staff members? How do I manage finances? 
uh, things like accounting, things like like solicitors and lawyers. How do I, you know, face mm. these challenges? And yeah, literally just that's it. Just try to team up with the right people. Um, one thing that like obviously, <laughs> if you speak to like <clears throat> the guys that work in my company, they'll probably tell you. But like developing people is something that I really believe in. Like having heard what you've just said about like mm. how I kind of developed through like really you know the, like low level jobs mm. and just having nothing there to getting into business I'll really I always see opportunity in it could be anyone like to be honest today I'm sitting here I'm the one with the businesses I'm the one that's you know making the money and whatever right um, maybe I don't know like the gardener that does you know the area mm. outside tomorrow he he might be here do you know what I mean mm. there's like there's a lot of potential in people themselves so you, you can't discount that so I've always kind of taken that mentality into business I've always seen like it's despite any position that you're in if you come in if you work hard if you prove, prove yourself mm. if you can kind of stick to the process you know have some input we see some results from that then you could be doing what I'm doing mm. and that's what really you know helped me kind of balance my time between the one business to then opening a second business mm. I was able to see some success in the first then again went back to the drawing board said okay cool what other opportunities available what finances what kind of um means are at my disposal here how can i utilize these things how can i invest my time my money mm. that i've earned through this into something more <coughs> and that's where basically um coupled with my experience previously in the finance industry or going to a lot of finance conferences i looked to and basically went into finance so that's basically logistics was the first business finance was the second business i set up and yeah that's obviously still one of the businesses that i currently run from there again, it was more like, okay, who are my clients? How can I serve them best? Mm. What is What else could like one of these clients need? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, one of the key things that the one of the tech companies I used to work for utilized was um, big data. And I used to attend a lot of these like crazy conferences where they used to go on and on and on, on about data. Even team building, um, mm. without obviously mentioning names or whatever, but... I ended up working for this big pharma company out in, I think it was Barcelona at the time, right? So we're on a, like a week-long conference. And mm. bearing in mind, these big corporate conferences are like really well-funded, like hundreds of thousand mm. pounds, you know, going to this. And they invited like some of the top salespeople to come down and they had to kind of motivate them and had to like do like team building to obviously increase sales. So the way they did that is they brought down the New Zealand rugby team Oh, okay. And yeah, I remember yeah. thinking at the time, like, what, what's rugby got to do, like, you know, pharmaceuticals? Mm. But they use like a, like, I don't know, some data scientists to kind of analyze that statistically, the New Zealand rugby team are the most successful rugby team in sports. Like, don't quote me now if, if that's not correct, but I don't know, maybe that, that might be the case. Yeah, so that's yeah, what yeah. they were saying anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> they spoke to the rugby team, like, how do you see success right. in rugby and how can we translate that to seeing success in business? business? Yeah, yeah. So those kind of key, like, things. Obviously, I couldn't do anything at the time. I was just a worker in a company. But years later, when I had the opportunity to mm. run my own company, run my own team of you know, mm. people working with me, I was like, okay, yeah, cool. I need to do these things. Mm. So looking at kind of how can I seek clients elsewhere? How can mm. I add services and add value to the people that I work with? Let me just uh, ask you before before you move on to kind of your, your second, third and, and, and you know, other ventures that you're, you're working on at the moment. <clears throat> When when you're working on that first um, business, the logistics business, so you're obviously you know you you're getting vans, uh, you're getting transportation, you're getting drivers, you're hiring. There's lots of recruitment going on. Um, yeah, go for it, bro. Um, there's, <laughs> so there's lots happening. Obviously, um, there's lots lots of pieces to this to this puzzle that's happening, right? And one of the things that that I was quite impressed with um, at the time, and I mentioned it to you at the time as well, was the fact that you had put those pieces in place and then you very, very quickly automated the whole business. And I don't mean in the sense of like, um, you know, you're sitting on a beach somewhere, but you actually had, <clears throat> you had the people in place very, very quickly. You, you created a management structure, you created a, a structure below that um, to carry out the work. You know, you, you um, gave people responsibilities and and you also went you know above and beyond um, in terms of uh, looking at some of your competitors as well and the things that you were doing where you were you know paying people more you were giving your your staff 
snacks and i think you had one whole van dedicated to to yeah. shisha and snacks and drinks and just whatever just like a little chill spot for the workers and stuff like that and that's obviously money coming out of your pocket you know you're the boss you know it's your business you know it's that's that's money that's coming out of your pocket to, to go towards this as well so like i said that was one thing that impressed me but the reason why it impressed me more was because obviously you know fast forward not even you know fast forward like a year before that or you know maybe even six months before that you know um there was there was none of that right there was no workers there was no team there was no no previous you know even in some of your roles that you know there might have been a few people working under you in terms of junior technicians but not not teams of people where you've got you know where you're the director and then you've got management structure so where did that come from where did that thinking come from in terms of okay i don't want to just be like this other guy that i've seen who's running his business and he's there every single day and you know he looks stressed out and you know because uh, at one point you even told me that that one of your competitors came to you and asked you for advice on you know how are you doing what you're doing right mm. so um yeah where did that thinking come from and and you know how were you able to implement that uh, practically i want to know kind of practically what were the steps that you took to actually implement that as well so i think what that comes down to is having no experience at all in business mm. ever so i come in with like a clean slate like i have no previous biases or kind of thoughts in my mind on how business should run mm. so what i did is i took a lot of like cues from technology and like the it industry with like testing mm -hmm. so like a b testing right so we'll run one model of doing something then we'll run we'll change everything around do something completely different and then compare the results from the two mm. and then continuously just like learn the process again and again and one of the key things is not being kind of hung up on like okay these are my ideas mm. this is how i want to run things you like i've always been open to let's run things in a certain way let's see what the results are maybe someone else can have some input we run things in a different way mm. and that's literally it just working closely with the team and just always kind of being willing to adapt the model mm. not just coming in with like like a boss mentality being like no do you know what i own the company therefore i have a monopoly and all the information and the knowledge so like it's a top-down management structure do you know what i mean like mm. you have to kind of loosen that kind of um see how things play out see what the different kind of variables are, change those variables, see what the outcomes are, see mm. how, if those outcomes then suit what you need. And a lot of that is kind of taken from, like I obviously keep mentioning like a lot of my like reading and like reading books on like complex adaptive systems and like, I don't know, like, you know, there's some of these big companies out mm. there. Like I think like Google, Facebook, a lot of these top companies, it's like a loosened top-down structure where they take more cues from the, the staff rather than just like implementing like, yeah, it has to be like this, has to be like this. Mm. So I think that's what it really was. Like having that brief exposure to those bigger companies then made me think like, well, if these big companies do things like this and mm. it works for them, hence they're, you know, multi-million, billion dollar companies or whatever, mm. why not me in this small little business? How, how come, you know, I can't do this? Mm. So I tried it. I just, just like practically just let people kind of come up with their own ideas um, and that ties into a lot of the, like, like you mentioned, like providing like incentives and things like that. Because mm. um, sometimes it's not as rigid, rigid as like just money in, money out, isn't it? Mm. Like you kind of have to be able to influence people's behavior, whether it's a client, mm. uh, whether it's someone that's working for you, you have to kind of be able to get the best out of that person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that's where all that kind of ties in there as well. Yeah, no, it's really interesting because uh, I remember when you started showing me some of the stuff that you were doing and I was like, wow, man, this is like, you know, very similar to the work that I'm doing, you know, and you know, obviously where, where I consult, um, you know, so so again, without having that kind of corporate experience, you know, it's really interesting to see that you just understood what needs to happen and you just applied kind of natural principles of what you feel should be the case and mm. implementing those things and allowing it to happen. And, that, you know, what, what I think, uh, you know, I want to know from that as well is why did you want to create a business which was self-sustaining without you again because generally when people run a business especially something of that type of magnitude as well i mean you know the the, the number of vans and uh you know drivers that you have um one would think that you know you'd want to control not not control but you'd want to be there right and you'd want to yeah. see okay where are the people and what are they doing and are they on time and are they you know meeting the the, the standards and, and all this type of stuff and 
and and what you did was you took a very kind of like a step back approach very early on and just looked at and you know i, I know this for for a fact you're just analyzing data both quantitative and qualitative in that sense of like you know conversations with people but then also looking at the raw facts um exactly so exactly. so so kind of why why did you want to take that step what what was the thing for you personally that you thought to yourself that okay I don't want to actually be in this business every day going to you know the the yard and you know I don't want to go be going there all the time I want to you know I want to be here controlling this business and then freeing my time I think the reason is right if um if you ask anyone that runs a business um a lot of the time do you know what I can't attribute the success of my business to me personally I can't say that it's because of what I do, the whole business runs. Like, mm. there's a lot of variables. There's a lot of people that work there. A lot of, like, where, you know, it might be the clients. Mm. Like, if it wasn't for the clients, we wouldn't have the business. Or if it wasn't for the actual, you know, the team on the ground working, mm. we wouldn't have the business. So it's being able to kind of listen and be, like, intuitive to that and saying, well, it's, you know, I'm required to this level. So let me do my job and, you know, get the business running. But, everything else is up to all these other factors in the business, whether it's the guys working, whether it's the customers that order and, you know, we fulfill for them, whether it's the client that gives us that volume or it's just being able to listen and, and know that, okay, my role is this. Um, don't get me wrong. Like it is like, you know, there it is required sometimes where you got to step in and you have to kind of know everything that's going on. But mm. it's, especially if you want to grow, to, if you want to scale something, like you have to be able to kind of like ration your time and you know, rationing your attention. Do you know what I mean? Like budget it basically, mm. isn't it? Mm. So yeah, I think that's pretty much that then. But um, yeah, so no, once it got to that stage where I was able to do that, kind of take that step back, um, it made me think: How can I better serve the people that work with me? Mm. Um, so it's not just saying that. Okay, cool. I'm going to step back to chill out like 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 eventually like be on a beach or whatever mm. i want to step back and then be able to have something else for these people that work with me mm. so how can i provide more opportunities not only to the wider community of the economy how can i add more value to mm. the economy but even the labor market like people that work for us how can we maybe give them opportunities mm. so that's when obviously then stepping into finance and then um there's a couple of people that i work closely with who i was able to kind of bring them on board with that and again like creating more opportunities for people it's not like business is one of the things like you're as an individual whether like you're entrepreneur ceo you're, like you're only like one cog in the machine mm. do you know what i mean there's still like wider kind of like factors and variables that need to take place so it's just yeah being able to give other people opportunities as well why is that important because you know like you said you know you didn't get into business for the lambos and stuff but you know that you, your, your take on business is quite refreshing in that sense where um, you know, you've got into business and very, very early on, you, you've um, given people opportunities and your your mindset is to give other people opportunities. Um, you know, again, where does that come from where, where you have that focus of actually it's about creating opportunities rather than uh, the potential revenue of a, a business model that I could implement? Okay. So with that, right, it's... Like I've I've got maybe like a different take on success, but a lot of my success I wouldn't say is financial. Uh, like don't get me wrong, I have seen some financial success, but you know maybe more more to come in it. But um, the key success that I think that you know I've achieved is in like my mentality, my education. Realistically, like as we previously mentioned, like I didn't really come from a place where I didn't attend like Wharton Business School, or, like Harrow School, and learn all these things. And then go into the world like, okay, yeah, now, you know, I've got this real academic take on business. And mm. like, you know, even, even realistically, like when you talk about business, you're really just talking about like mathematics, economics, and like, you know, variations in behavior and things like that, like psychology is of mm. like the consumer. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't really have like an academic thing, like where I went into the world knowing everything. So it's just the success I see is like, okay, I didn't know before, but now I understand these things that I, I didn't understand previously. And when I sit down and talk to people and a lot of the time people are like, oh wow, like, you know, I've never really looked at it this way or I wasn't really aware of these things. Oh, it's interesting that you're thinking about these things. Mm. That is more successful to me. That That's like, that's that's what I really, you know, thrive for rather than like go cash out and like, you know, buy something. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, wow, like, you know, I've actually learned something here. I've actually improved. It's, it's more like a self-improvement. Do you know what I mean? Because even again, 
those things that are like material finances like uh, don't get me wrong these things are obviously really important and you know you should kind of work hard for these things but if i were to lose everything tomorrow the kind of lessons i've learned and the knowledge i've gained still sticks with me in my brain mm. so if i was to leave the uk completely like you know move to the other side of the world no one knows me there i have to start fresh i i have everything with me really but it's all locked in my mind so i can then you know just replicate everything again and that is like to me that's like true success like when you can just replicate your success again and again mm. then it doesn't even boil down to like luck it's like a certainty like just reaching that kind of certainty for me so whether it's like really understanding like difficult financial information like if i've got a problem in the company and like something's just not going right i won't like ha i have no peace until i understand why it's not going wrong maybe it's something that i've never even looked at maybe i have to learn a whole different thing to kind of even understand what's going on do you know what i mean mm. but i never want to be that person that doesn't know what's going on and that's always something that's kind of stuck with me in my life where early on you know maybe i'll be talking to someone and they'll be talking about something i, I don't know what they're talking about and i've always hated that like mm. i've always wanted to like have more information that have money in it <laughs> do you know what i mean mm. so that that's really it i reckon okay no that's really really interesting man so for you it's all about just learning and actually having a goal and then seeing it being achieved exactly and just the, the the experience that that gains and the wisdom that it gains or if something doesn't work out then the experience and the wisdom that, that gains from it as well exactly because that is congruent with again financial success isn't it mm. like if i've built my knowledge to a certain level if i've built certain connections and i've built you know skill set mm. uh, at some point someone is going to need these things that i have mm. somewhere down the line there's going to be a business where i can add value somewhere down the line there's gonna be someone that needs these things that i can bring to the table mm. do you know what i mean yeah yeah. and then that can then translate into financial success or not or whatever it might be mm. or even if it's just me freelancing again and working for like another company it's fine at the end of the day it's, it's still a way mm. to make money do you know what i mean but yeah, yeah. i'll then still have that knowledge and i can always start another business you know what i mean and I guess that gives confidence as well and uh, a sense of security in yourself, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Because you know that no matter what the economic... Like, I feel this way as well. Like, no matter what the economic circumstances are, I'll be able to make money. I'll, I'll be able to achieve... I'll know how to make... You know what I mean? Because I think it's that mindset of like uh, finding a problem and then providing a solution for that. Exactly, exactly. And it wasn't until I was able to kind of really see traction in that mm. that I really saw traction financially. And that's kind of the key, like, that's something that really used to bother me early on. I used to think, like, okay, why is it, why can't I just apply my intellect, apply my hard work, and why would that not just turn out into money? Mm. It's, I had to grow the, you know, the skill set, the, the men, like, my mentality, just, I had to grow my knowledge to a certain level where it was needed enough for them, me to exchange that for, you know, for mm. money, really, isn't it? Or apply that and then make money from that absolutely absolutely no that makes complete sense and so so it's interesting and and you know obviously uh you know you, you've gone from uh really being kind of naive to the world uh you know now you're traveling you know you've seen the world you, you're up in these kind of very very high uh you know these very very high corporate events and these very kind of private wealth management kind of uh, <laughs> seminars that you're working within, et cetera, all across the world. You know, now, then you, you move into setting up a logistics business and then you're running that. And now you, you've got it to a point where, as I mentioned, you've got that management structure in place and that's, you know, you, you've empowered these people to actually run this business and report to you and you're, you're, you're analyzing the business. Now you move on to, like you mentioned, a, a finance business, right? So then you open up a finance company and uh you know that that in itself you know very quickly after that you you've opened up several other businesses as well um so just quickly touch upon the the finance business and you know why did you get into finance and you know kind of what's the work that you've done in because i know that you that's not been an easy thing it's not been a a thing where you've just uh set up a website that's you've you've, you've done a level of training and qualification as well in these last few kind of months whilst running this other business as well yeah so I think with finance, it wasn't basically with the second opportunity, I was lucky to then kind of pick the opportunity with logistics. I kind of just fell into mm. it with no previous experience um, with finance. That's actually something I chose to get into. Mm. Um, I did look at like a wide you know, range of opportunities out there and see what I could get into. But finance really spoke to me because, um, again, there's that like degree of like mathematics and 
like economics and these are things I've just generally always been interested in from like early days when I was reading about it in the newspaper mm. to now like I can actually go and talk to people about it and actually participate do you know what right. I mean yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's always been with me it's like okay I've been looking at it from the outside now mm. I can finally participate and it's been like an honour for me really to like mm. come into like the finance industry and actually get to do because I genuinely enjoy it like sitting down talking figures with the people and mm. kind of analysing what could potentially happen and giving people like not financial advice but although we do <laughs> give financial advice but um <laughs> yeah just basically solving problems mm. and those problems are around money mm. and that's that's really it it's so what, what, what are the type of deals that you work on then uh so we do basically it's commercial finance so uh property finance we do uh invoice and factoring we do development loans a lot of property-based finance a lot of or purely like business finance mm. so that then kind of gave me ideas to open up more businesses that align with that finance business. How mm. how could I then, you know, if I can serve the property sector with mm. finance, what else can I serve them with? Is it going to be worth me also then selling the house? Is it going to be worth me then also developing the property? Uh, what else can I do? Is it then, you know, property management? Is that something I can do as well? So, yeah, it, mm. it also, it's something that I enjoy, but then also something that you can use that data again. Again, it's a very data-driven mm. industry, so... That's something that really speaks to me. And so now you, you, you kind of alluded to your, your the, the third business that you opened, which is obviously in the property industry. So you had the logistics business, which is, like you said, something that you didn't really have a choice within. It was just something that came up, an opportunity that you saw, and you grabbed it with both hands and, and you ran with it. Then you had the Then you had the ability, the freedom, which finance can give you to actually choose your next opportunity, which was finance. And uh, and that was based off of your interest and your passion um, and something that you wanted to, I, I guess you saw it as something that would be congruent with the lifestyle that you want to achieve as well. Mm. You know, being up in, uh, you know, again, in these corporate type of events, but actually now you're at the table rather than being somebody who's behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Exactly. exactly. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's funny how a lot of things are coming kind of full circle in your life as well. You know, mm. things that you've been interested in reading 10 years prior when you were in the security guard, you're now actually implementing a lot of that information in the, 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 the conversations that you're having with the people that you're, you're talking to, your clients that you've got. Exactly. Um, and then you said something really interesting, which is, okay, fine. So if I'm in this industry, what else can I do in this industry? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's a really kind of key um, uh, point that I see with a lot of people that grow their businesses very successfully, which is they grow within an ecosystem. So, you know, it's like the same clients that you're working with in one business. Okay, what's the next, you know, on that, on that supply chain, what's the next process? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the next part of that? So why can't we go there? And I guess that's what you've done then. So you, you're looking at the finance of things in terms of, okay, this is what we can do for people that have, you know, have done this level of research. Mm. So why can't we be the people that provide those opportunities, that level of research to people as well? Exactly, exactly. So like exactly what you mentioned there about the ecosystem, it's, um, I looked at like SoftBank. SoftBank have, um, what is it, the Vision Fund? It's like the biggest hedge fund. It's like $100 billion or something, right? Mm. Um, I was watching, you know, or reading articles about this guy, watching, you know, reports of him. And he was talking about having like a self-reinforcing ecosystem of companies, mm. companies that can help each other. So it's like a kind of micro economy onto itself. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I was like, okay, cool. Like maybe I can do something like this. This, this guy's talking about a hundred billion dollars. And you know, maybe, you know, on a, again, like on a smaller mm. scale, maybe I can replicate these things, isn't it? Because um, something I've realized, something that really transcends business is, like I mentioned, like economics, mathematics, and like especially data science. Mm-hmm. Um, going from one business to another to another business, I've seen that the traits that kind of follow in all these businesses, something that's really important across the board is like data science and like just that, like some basic um, abilities in mathematics and um, just a basic understanding of economics. So that's really like that's those are the skills that I really focus on. Mm-hmm. In fact, like um, I'm even like studying like how to code and I take like data science courses and things like that. Because again, like I re- I really do want to improve my own skills and mm. if I can add value like that more than you know why wouldn't I? Mm. That's, that's 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 really cool, man. I think that's that's um, again it's quite refreshing. You don't don't hear too many uh, CEOs, company owners who are taking that step to actually like you know do data science courses and stuff like that to to help with their business so 
No, I think that's 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 really interesting. And so now you've got these these property companies. So what do you do in the property industry? Uh, it's just like letting, uh, commercial lettings. We do hope to get to like development soon. So like you know, acquire land, and build up the properties, mm-hmm. and sell them off. Um, another business I've gone into like is the restaurant industry as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've gone into that. Um, yeah, I've got a restaurant there now, and yeah, that's it. I think. Uh, something else I spoke to you about was just like aftercare and sales for our property businesses. So more property management, mm. but yeah, just trying to, I guess, invoke like a wide array of disciplines to again, add value to the clients. Mm. It's just trying to, it's similar to like what a lot of these tech companies do, like they'll get you in for one product. Like, you know, if you have like WhatsApp and then you have Instagram and then you have Facebook, again, you're just scrolling through the same like the metaverse isn't it really mm, isn't it yeah, yeah so like the one company meta so that's what it is really like even like google use gmail and then you use like google maps to get somewhere mm-hmm. and you save your documents on google drive and then like your phone runs google android do you know what i mean yeah yeah so it's something i've learned like again like i keep talking about like the reading and stuff like that mm. like i read a lot of books about how these big companies are formed mm. what kind of key principles the principles that go behind like coding and like development and like like computer science what is it that I can learn from these things? Mm. Because obviously, like, these companies have seen massive success, isn't it? Like, Mm. huge, huge conglomerates. So, yeah, I'm just really learning from that. Do you ever ever read for a specific issue or problem or to learn a specific thing? Or is it more just things that, like, you're interested in? Just is it books that you're interested in? Like, like, uh, just to qualify that slightly more as well. Like, for example, if somebody you know is listening to this and they think okay well okay i'll, I'll start reading but i'll read what about do you read right yeah what do you read okay, yeah, yeah there you go yeah, yeah. Nah, that's actually a really good question do you know what even, even with reading that's like a whole journey for me yeah, yeah honestly yeah. like i know you mentioned like the godfather earlier right it's because that that was one of the first kind of full books that i completed mm. like basically i started out obviously reading the newspaper mm. like the metro it's really easy to digest okay they're talking about this talking about that mm. then it's slowly like upgrading it like the times the telegraph where the language is a bit more complex mm-hmm. the concepts are a bit more complex talking about things that may not you know affect me directly and then i started or you know i read that like i watched the godfather movie and i was like, oh yeah it's a great movie and then i didn't even know it was a book um so yeah then i read the whole book i was like oh wow like the movie is nothing compared to the book but we hear that like from a lot of people that read but i was like yeah like everything that's described in the book is so much more than Mm. the movie it's like a 10 hour movie in my head (laughs) do you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) so then that got me used to reading like more difficult things Mm. so from there it's just i don't know maybe reading like i don't know like economics books books on like the economy or Mm. books on like data science just reading more and more difficult things. Mm. And sometimes I, I try to read for pleasure as well. Mm. So I think, back to the original question of like what to read, mm. I think what you need to do is cultivate the habit of reading. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like saying, okay, I'll go to the gym, what do I work out? Mm. That's not the point. The point is like to cultivate the habit of fitness in your mm. lifestyle, do you know what I mean? Mm. Whether like it's just, in, it's just going to the gym. Just read just, something in it, basically. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah just yeah. read something. Just like, what are you interested mm. in and what's like really on your mind you don't, don't have stress to, it and just don't, read don't read it. To, yeah. it's not like okay i'm going to read this book on economics mm. and i'm going to learn that like that i'm going to learn this and this will be the output exactly yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. that that's one of the key you just learn to kind of like or just read like just to learn just to, yeah, like yeah. recreationally you know what i mean mm. uh and then once that builds up then it's like okay cool um maybe something might come along in your life and you might think oh that's interesting maybe how do I learn more about this? Pick up a book on that topic mm. because you're so accustomed to reading anyway. You will just absorb the information better. You'll be able to you mm. know, understand things clearer. And that's it really. Like even with reading, it's not as clear as just like, it's not as simple as just pick up a book, mm. learn something. And now the information's in my mind. Because even then, like like I say, I read a lot, right? But sometimes it's hard to recall like specific passages because it's just, like so much mm. <laughs> information. So I have to like reread a book sometimes, mm. time to time to kind of refresh like my knowledge on a particular topic mm. or but yeah the key thing really is just to cultivate that habit yeah and i think uh, i think ultimately something that uh, jordan i had jordan peterson say actually was um you know, a lot of the time what we do is like when we're reading something like we we just need to we just need to know the gist of what happened like exactly. we we're, we're not going to remember every single word and everything it just kind of you just understand the principle exactly. almost you understand the principle what the book was trying to tell you the principle of what this chapter was trying to convey you know what i mean the meaning of this and etc mm. so 
Yeah, no, that's that's really interesting. The, the reason I, the reason I asked you that question as well because I know that you read, uh, you know, some some really kind of classical novels as well, like uh, Dostoevsky, etc. Yeah, like you're really into yeah, that, and yeah, you yeah. Read, read a lot about psychology and stuff like that. Do you think any of that has helped you in terms of? Uh, I mean, we were talking about personality traits earlier. Um, has any of that helped you in business as well? Like, um, I guess some of the things about, um, you know, like Dostoevsky. You know, that's about society. Um, you know, you you read a lot about George Orwell, psychology books, etc. Do you think that that actually helps you in a lot of like French classics like Les Misérables? Um, yeah, Victor Hugo. Um, what is it? Oh, I'm gonna forget that Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Read that uh, Dostoevsky, like classical, like Russian literature, and uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Sorry, hard to pronounce the name. Um, Nietzsche, like like German philosophy and things. But I think. The kind of secondary benefit of reading is the discipline that it gets into. Because a lot of the time when I talk about like reading to people, like, oh, how can you sit there and listen to that book for like 10 hours? Or mm. like, how can you sit there and read that book for three hours or whatever it is? But it's like a discipline, isn't it? Mm. Like if you can sit there and read for like three hours and you can kind of make yourself go and run for like three hours. Mm. You could sit and work on your business for three hours. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You can sit and research something for three hours. So it's just, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. So, it, so yeah, it helps you to actually build the discipline of being disciplined. Exactly, exactly. And being focused on on, on on one task. On one task, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And just Rather than just sitting mindlessly. Because you have to active, you have to be quite active in when you're listening to an audiobook as well, right? You have to actually engage with, engage it. with it. Exactly, exactly. No, that's really interesting. Okay, so so we we've got to the point now where you actually <laughs> you're running a, a your own restaurant as well now, your own food business. So, uh, you know, without going kind of too much into it, like, but how how did how did that come about? And you know, again, this is a completely new venture for you. And I guess the the the, the final kind of follow up question that I want to ask to this is, um, you know, so so where did this come about from? But then also, what are your principles for succeeding in business, especially if you're launching a new venture? What is your kind of, I suppose, your tick list because you must have certain principles now that you've built mm. that are transferable across any business that you launch and obviously just the nuances will be different mm. okay so the way that that business came about the restaurant business is i'd already you know at this point seen some success with previous businesses um i was lucky enough to have a friend who referred a friend to me again like people refer people to me or you know i'm referred to someone else mm. um by the way, it's not something that I like, I'm not out there networking or I'm not trying to like put myself mm. out there all the time. It just happens. Mm. Like sometimes you can't control these things. But in this case, it turned out that the person I went into business with uh, needed my particular skill set, mm. which was, again, running a business. So take, taking care of like all the legal aspects of it, all the financial mm. and the accounting aspects of it. And then again, implementing data science into seeing where growth can take place, where savings can take place and just scalability right Mm. uh so yeah business partner came along his skill set obviously like like you know talking about restaurants i I literally have you know i can't well i can cook in it but not professionally or like i'm no food critic Mm. and the funny thing is um i actually got into the business and it was like four months into the business like i put like money into it and everything and we got like paper sign and we're actually setting up i hadn't even tried the food all right okay, it was, okay it's not about the food for me yeah yeah. you get it it's not like where you think like okay cool restaurant business what's the food like mm. oh, i don't like it why would i open that business mm. but it's not even that i didn't like, obviously the food's amazing like i'm, mm. I'm never gonna yeah. say it's not but um it wasn't about that for me it was just about being again an opportunity to implement my skill set and refine mm. my skill set and when you talk about principles that i kind of carry through my businesses and things that i hope will take me into the future mm. it's a um the ability to learn mm. B, it's the ability to kind of know my limits, which kind of ties into learning. Because if you know your limits, then you know where you need to improve. Mm. Like, for example, like me and you, we could set up a business. We could set up like, I don't know, like a a car wash or something tomorrow, right? Mm. Maybe you know about washing cars, but I don't. And I'm going to be clear about that. Mm. I'm like, look, I can only do this. And you're the one that can do the other tasks, like the operational stuff. Mm. So I need to take, you know, your advice when it comes to this. Obviously, you know, I hope you take my advice, vice versa, but knowing the kind of limits there, do you know what I mean? And my, my limits are literally on that accounting side, the financial side, um, the legal side of things, mm-hmm. and just that scalability. So knowing your limits, 
always been like willing to learn and always taking the opportunity to refine your skill set. I know that kind of goes in with like improving yourself, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it really. If I can kind of stick to that and just always adapt, then yeah, I think hopefully it will take me into more businesses in the future and just a long career in business. And definitely uh, keep an eye on the numbers as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's always important. That's like the most important. <laughs> Do you know what's funny actually? Like you saying that, right? Um, I, I read this one in a book, right? Um, I think it was the CEO of Google at the time. Yeah. He happened to, there happened to be like a change in the Google offices and they moved his office mm. into like the same building as like the finance guys. Mm. So day to day, like he would sit behind the finance guys and he'd see the numbers and the revenues and things like that. And that kind of hands on financial data helped them really come up with like new products and really innovate. I think it was at the point where Google were utilizing like data exhaust. So it's where they realized that like, you know, when you search something, it's not only what you search, but the time you search it, all the other mm. things that kind of yeah, 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 yeah. that kind of go into the predictive like products that Google make. But yeah, it's it's definitely like having a good eye for like for the numbers and keeping an eye on that. It's one of the most important things. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Now, Mo, look, I really appreciate your time, man, and uh, I think uh, one of the things that I, I really wanted to bring you on because obviously. You know, you, you've known me for a long time and you've been, uh, you know, aware of this journey in terms of the podcast since, you know, the, the very first day. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been aware of, um, you know, from when, <clears throat> from obviously when that opportunity started to, to where we are now as well. You know, to see that progression and that growth, you know, for me is, is you know, it's, it's really inspiring even for me to see that in yourself. Because, again, you hear, you hear a lot of... Um, I suppose rags to riches stories don't you mm. and uh you know i think you know you and i have had many conversations over the years where you know you know even in yourself you've said uh, you know you know it's always someone else right it's always someone else and you know with yourself to kind of see that you know from the outside looking in it's very easy to just point at you now and say okay that that could be someone mm. but obviously to have seen the whack that's gone into it to see the ups, the downs, the the trials, the tribulations that have gone into that as well, you know, it's uh, you know, it's 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 really really important to kind of um, you know, highlight that fact that you know you've you haven't come from any level of wealth, you know, I say that respectfully, you haven't come from any level yeah, of yeah, no, you know real wealth or real stability, and you know you've uh, you you've you've not even really kind of pushed yourself, but life has pushed you. And you've kind of always just accepted the reality of what it is. And now you're in a position where actually you're in control of the, uh, you know, the places that you are at, you know, where you are, who you're around, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it's a complete 180 shift in, in terms of where you're, where you were and where you are now. So, yeah, no, we're really, really happy that, uh, you know, we're, we're doing this podcast and we're able to have all of this, this story to actually tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it. Obviously, I appreciate you having me on. And like I always say, like, I don't know if there's any value that people can gain from this. But yeah, I mean, I was always that person that, like, like you mentioned, it was always someone else. I was always frustrated. Why is it, you know, why is it not working out for me? But I don't know, really, I, I can't sit here and quantify everything and say, yeah, because you hear that a lot with like, you know, mm. there's a lot of stuff out there on business. A lot of people just say, yeah, just do this and that's it. You'll, you'll see the results. But it's not, it's not really that one thing that you do. Mm. It's that those kind of like, like the mentality, the principles that you cultivate in yourself. It's a long term journey, isn't it? Mm. And yes, things may change and things may accelerate quicker. Things may slow down sometimes. But again, like the one thing that you do have control over is yourself. And if you can always improve yourself, then, you know, whatever's there for you will come, really. Inshallah, man. No, thanks so much for that, bro. No worries, man. Love. Cool, man. That's it, yeah? All done. That was sick, man. What do you think?